explosions, guns, heavy metal guitar riffs, more explosions. While these things are fun in a lot of games, we all need a break from them at some point. Chill games let you slow down and relax yourself, even just for a little bit. Whether it's farming games, driving games, retro games, the chill game category takes many forms in helping us turn our brains off. Everyone knows Stardew Valley is the quintessential chill game, so I wanted to bring you a collection of titles that you are less likely to have seen or played. There are a couple games in here that you've definitely heard of and probably played, but they still earn a spot. Plus, I could easily get footage for them, so go cry about it. Anyways, my name is Boo, and these are my five chill games that are not Stardew Valley or a Stardew Valley clone. Enjoy. This first entry is the universally praised Firewatch. Playing as a forest fire lookout named Henry, you first do typical and mundane forest ranger things like spotting wildlife and confiscating fireworks from teenagers. However, once the ball gets rolling, you have to handle some heavy things that you come across. I can't say what those are since it's kind of the game's whole mystery, so... As Henry, you get to make choices about handling certain situations or what to say in conversations. So many players may choose to replay this game in order to experience the other options. While the game's main story stays on track despite your choices, it's fun to see what crazy answers and actions that Henry can respond with. Another great element is the setting of the game. The environment is perfect for what this game does. It's beautiful to traverse through, and I often stopped and appreciated the views. Because of the challenging terrain and use of paper map navigation, the exploration is paced very well. These aspects make getting from point A to point B more engaging than completely mindless, hold W to go forward gameplay. Gameplay certainly isn't the main focus of this game, and I would agree it's the weakest part. However, this game doesn't need perfect gameplay, because the main focus is the dynamic between Henry and Delilah, another ranger. Don't worry, this isn't some dating sim with an outdoor setting. Instead, these two characters become good friends, and they are simply incredible. Everything from how Henry and Delilah are developed, to the voice acting, to the characterization, is just top notch, and it's what takes this game from solid to once in a generation experience. The second spot on my list goes to the Passepartout 2 games. I'm not French, and I refuse to learn their language, so if I said the name wrong, I genuinely do not care. French hate aside, these two games offer the unique experience of turning MS Paint into a fun game with fun little rewards. The first game is very basic with three tools, flat canvases only, and limited color options, but the game will recognize quality work that took time and who would be interested in it. For example, if you want to sell more art to the punk crowd rather than the snobs, you paint with darker colors and messier lines. You can haggle the price if you think the customer's offer is low, but you risk lowering it even further. This first game is older and simple, so it'll run on anything. The second game is where the franchise pulls a Terminator 2 and makes everything good about the first one so much bigger and better. Now, you get many more tools, an assortment of canvases and objects to paint on, and an explorable town with NPCs and a little story to it. The graphics and lighting are infinitely better than the first, but it's not going to melt your GPU. Haggling returns with the ability to turn down customers in hopes that another one offers a better price. Using this money, you buy new tools and more supplies. By interacting with the NPCs, you can get fun and unique tasks that require you to paint a specific way. These games have no redo button, so if your hand slips and you draw a thick black line through your masterpiece, I just hope you can fix it. However, this doesn't create stress, but instead it helps you slow down and take your time on every brushstroke. These two games are a great pair, and they're very similar, but they are different enough for me to suggest trying out both of them and seeing which one you like more. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps you get more content like this, and it helps me avoid talking to girls by staying home to edit instead of going outside. The third entry is originally a mobile game, but don't get your pitchforks just yet. Donut County is an award-winning indie game that has a great art style, a fantastic soundtrack, and addicting gameplay that doesn't cuck you over with microtransactions once you start having actual fun. The goal is to collect all the items in the map by utilizing a hole in the ground. That's as simple as it gets. As you progress through the game, you learn to use certain objects and the environment to solve puzzles that let you complete later levels. There are no timers or fail conditions on most stages, so there's not any pressure to get everything right on the first try. The controls are incredibly simple, which pairs well with the satisfying physics of stuff falling into the hole. The characters are likable and the story is funny, but you can choose to ignore these parts without missing out on too much. 
The game is pretty short, especially if you skip through the cutscenes as fast as I did. However, this game's length is just right for what it's trying to do. It's long enough to get a couple hours of fun out of, but it's not a 10 or 20 or 100 hour epic adventure that becomes a chore to play only a quarter of the way through it. Donut County is a great game for people that want to relax, pilot a hole in the ground, and laugh at the funny raccoon. Game number four is an isometric skateboarding game called The Ramp. While it's a very simple and small game, it's one that's best for booting up and then completely turning your brain off for 10 to 20 minutes. It doesn't need any controls except your keyboard, but you can also plug in a controller to get extra precise steering. The game has four maps to pick from. These each lend themselves to different styles of skating, such as the big ramp being great for people trying to get the most rotations in one jump, the pool is great for grinds, and so on. My personal opinion is that the pool is the best, half pipe second, big ramp third, and skate park last. People can disagree of course, but I have my reasons beyond skating style differences. The satisfying part of this game is when you get into a flow. Hitting trick after trick, not crashing or falling, and gaining speed will let you mentally detach because it feels like nothing can bring you down. There is no in-game flow system except for the music getting a little smoother, but that's fine when entering a real-life flow state is the better option. One complaint I immediately had when playing the game is that there are no sound controls. All you get is music on or off, but no volume for it or the game's sound effects. This can be a little frustrating and I wish it could be fixed. This game is best enjoyed with throwing headphones on and zoning out to your own music, so the sound probably won't be a huge factor to you anyways. The Ramp is one of those games that are fun to play when you've got a short break, and you just want to vibe while skating around. And the final game on this list is certainly more well known than Stardew, but Uno's popularity as a tabletop game played with friends translates to the screen pretty well, and that's why I have it on the list. There are a solid mix of house rules to mess with, but you don't need to use them all to have fun. Your Uno experience can be as chill or aggressive as you want it to be. The best thing about Uno is that you make as much fun out of it as you want. If you think playing random people online with whatever rules is the most fun way to play, you can do just that. If you convince your friends to get it too because you want to chat with them while giving them draw fours, that's great too. While I make it some flack for including Uno as a chill game because it can 100% cause immense rage. Well, mine didn't have it. You have Uno, you fucking dick! I do think the overall experience is not a mind-intensive one. You can sit there with your feet up while eating food and still win a lot of rounds. There are downsides of this game, such as you can only have exactly four players, which sucks when you want to play with more than three friends. It also has microtransactions and bundle packs for some of the customization in DLC, which is my main complaint. However, there are also many of these things to unlock for free or by just playing the game, and you don't need any of the paid items to enjoy the gameplay. And besides, it's not like real Uno doesn't have a type of DLC too. There's lots of variations of real life Uno that change the look and add cards, but these have to be bought for more money than the classic deck costs at a store. Since I'm running out of time in the video, I'll just summarize that physical Uno with friends or family is still my favorite way to play, but digital Uno is the way I play with my friends that live far away, and it's awesome for that chill game night feeling. To close things out, I always have an honorable mention, and that one for this video is Skate 3. I didn't include the game in this list because, frankly, I would have just made the entire video about how much I love Skate 3 instead of talking about anything else. That video will probably come one day, but for now, I must contain my Skate 3 worship. If you want more lists like this or you have anything to say about my video, let me know by leaving your honest thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.